Hello, TikTok Live. I'm gonna adjust this really quick so that it's not like pointing up towards the ceiling. Ooh, that was Penelope. She's cooing. It's starting to be really cute. Um, hello, TikTok Live. If this is the first time that you are joining in, welcome to my TikTok Live. If you have been here before, if you've been here multiple times, welcome back. I'm really excited to go live today and talk about just everything that's happened in the last couple of days. Um, today, I don't really have a particular formal topic, but I do want to talk about what I have been learning through this live challenge and what has been happening through this live challenge so that you can get an idea of when you do start to go live, if you do start to go live, how it can actually create this huge ripple effect for you and what it is that you are looking to do, whether it's for your goals, for your relationships, for your life, for your business, for your content, etc. So this is day eight of me going live consistently and I have so much to share. Um, I have made probably somewhere in the realm of like, um, <laughs> I don't understand this question, but <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if like what the wood grain of my cabinets are. <laughs> I didn't ask. Um, I have made somewhere in the realm of an additional 10 to 12 connections through just going live on TikTok. And this, and even through the videos that I have released on TikTok through this in my own personal content. So that is massive, especially if you are looking to do something for, you know, brands or if you're looking to do something with your content, if you have a business, if you plan on starting a business, that is huge because our business stems from our relationships, right? And one of the biggest um, questions that I came across recently today is what platform do I recommend? And I'm going to tell you in all honesty, TikTok is a massive platform right now. You are you want to make the most of this platform right now. I have a 128 people on this live. Like just on this live alone, I have over 100 viewers and that is massive so that is something you're going to want to consider when you are considering what platform you want to show up on because there is a huge amount of people who are using utilizing and using this platform so keep that in your head that i i am going to definitely sorry penelope is like not having it right now i'm going to definitely recommend that you use tiktok as a platform because it's just so used, it's so popular, and it's there's so many people who are on this platform. You can you have so much opportunity here. Um, one other platform that I actually also really recommend is YouTube Shorts. I have been putting up and posting shorts on YouTube for quite a while now, and I've been noticing that the shorts perform way more than the long form video right now. Long form video does have a history, so you can rank on the long form video. And this, you know, like ranking is gonna be something that lasts in terms of time. You can post a video now and it's gonna still rank on a tag, like, you know, a, a searchable keyword, um, even three years into the future. So you can have, you could have posted a video back in 2017 and it's still gonna perform in that long form video, you know, category. But if you're utilizing YouTube Shorts, it's huge. It's going to bring you a lot of traffic to your YouTube channel. It's going to bring you a lot of community supporters if they, you know, agree with you, if they want to learn more from you, if they want to get into your world. And I have seen upwards of like three or 4,000 views on some of my videos. So it really is such a great platform to also start utilizing and incorporating. Um... I have not seen the same success in terms of Instagram reels. I'm going to be quite honest. A lot of Instagram is people who you already know and who you're already following. So it's going to be a lot of 
like within your own community, more or less. It's going to be really hard for you to reach new people and get more people into your community, which is why YouTube Shorts and which is why TikTok is such a massive opportunity right now because you can reach so many more new people and so many more new users that you wouldn't have been able to reach with something like Instagram right now because of the way that they're following, you know, and their community guidelines kind of go. Hello, Adventures with Jen. What is going on? Um, need to figure out how to add moderators so they can block for you. Yeah. Um, again, this is a learning experience for everyone. So I wonder if I can go in here to the settings and I'm going to add you as a moderator, Mally. Let me know if that like came through. And if that did, then let me know if you can like start to, if you could start to do that because that would be awesome. Yes. Okay. Awesome. I am so glad to see that. Thank you for dropping that in the comment section. Um, going back to the platforms topic, just because this was a huge question that came up in the last day or so, and this is very relevant to this live experience. If you have any questions about any platform, be sure to drop it down on um, the comments so that I can answer those questions for you. It showed up that she is a moderator on my end. Awesome. Okay. So I know how to do that now. I'm actually going to do this too so that you can also moderate because I... Definitely want to make sure that, you know, anybody who comes in can view the live. But then if there's something that is like so completely not relevant, then we don't get into a um, ad moderator. We don't get into a situation, you know. Um, excuse me. There is no crying on this Instagram live. Here. There we go. Get that thing in your mouth. There you go. All right, awesome. <laughs> All right, awesome. So going back to the platform, woo, going back to the platform conversation, Instagram live question mark. Okay, great question. So I, <laughs> I actually did an Instagram live challenge last year and I did not actually Instagram live. No, that's what you said. Um, sorry, I meant TikTok live. Yes, <laughs> the TikTok live challenge. Um, it could be because I'm trying to like do two things at once and I'm thinking about talking about Instagram, which is why I said Instagram live, but that's not what I meant. <laughs> yes, awesome. I'm glad that you get what I'm saying. Um, the TikTok live challenge, I have come across questions about platforms. What is the best platform that I recommend? Um, TikTok obviously. YouTube Shorts, yes, because that has been massive for my YouTube account. Um, not really Instagram. I'm going to be honest, Facebook has been coming up real strong for a really old platform. And it's typically due to Facebook groups. You can connect with a lot of people in Facebook groups. Also, because they have added the Reels feature, you can also reach a lot of people because video is king. It's just that it, it's just, it, that's just the way that it is. People are not really consuming as much written content. That's not to say that people don't consume written content because they still do. I still read captions. I still read the paper every now and then. I, I am still a little old school, even though I'm pretty new school. I'm like that hybrid generation there. But the point is that if you want to start seeing some kind of growth or if you want to see your content reach newer audiences and newer people video is definitely the way to go i have seen i'm going to talk about instagram live for a second because somebody did actually bring this up to me the other day as far as taking the tiktok live replays that i am currently doing and then putting it up onto instagram now i'm gonna be honest i'm not quite sure what is happening with instagram's long form video algorithm or what is going on in terms of how you can upload long form video on that platform but typically my lives as you know are about 30 minutes so i will get a 30 minute video that i can download from tiktok and then repurpose i.e re-upload onto a different platform now what I have seen is that 
you can't upload more than 15 minutes onto Instagram, which is really unfortunate because there is a lot of content that I cover in 30 minutes. There are a lot of topics. There are a lot of questions. There are a lot of comments. There are a lot of things that I can cover in 30 minutes. And that's a lot of value that my Instagram audience is now going to miss out on because I cannot post that onto that platform. So that being said, upload from desktop. If that does help me upload more than 15 minute clips, and I absolutely will, I'm going to be very honest. I have not been in love with um, Instagram lately. I, it's been feeling very heavy for me. It's been feeling very frustrating for me. It's been very difficult for me to see real true growth on that platform. And I don't, I feel like every time I post, it's like I'm hitting a wall. So I really have not been the biggest fan and I have really not been referring anybody to using that platform. And it's just because of my experience. That again is my personal experience. It's not to say that that is everyone's experience. Obviously other people have different experiences. So it is definitely something that if you are having a great experience on Instagram, maybe you can share your experience so that we can all learn something different, all right? I have so many things I want my channel to be about, but I suppose it is about testing. Yes, in a sense it is. I'm gonna be very transparent and say that typically you get to be known for one thing first and then you can start to go out into these other realms. Now, if you were to go back to the beginning of my TikTok page, you can see that I talk a lot about going viral on TikTok and I talk about trends and I talk about hashtags and I talk and even in some of my recent content for this year, I'm still talking about hashtags. It's still relevant and, you know, interesting information for a lot of people. It's very helpful information for a lot of people who are looking to, you know, grow their pages and grow their channels. I'm going to be forward with you though and say that it's not necessarily that's not the thing that I really want to talk about every single day every single day I I want to talk about being a mom or I want to talk about spirituality or I want to talk about um something other than content but that's again because what I'm most known for that's typically where I that's where I kind of stay um you do want to test things to see what works but you don't necessarily want to find yourself testing all of the time because then it takes away from the fun of creating and takes away from the fun of being on social media. Um, that This is very uninteresting. I'm, <laughs> I am so glad that you said that. You don't have to stay. <laughs> that makes sense. Yes, okay, Jen, I'm glad to hear that that is making sense for you. It's like you want to be authentic, right? Like you want to show up as yourself. You want to talk about what it is that interests you, which is why I've been saying on a couple of my more recent videos that having a mission statement is something to consider because then you can start to talk about a bunch of other different things. I don't know if it was in the video that I most recently released, but the reason why you actually want to talk about more than one topic is because typically People are following, like, okay, let me just think about myself, right? One of my biggest interests right now is, like, personal growth, manifestation, spirituality, right? So what happens a lot of the time is when I get onto TikTok, my For You page is filled with videos that are in that category, in those realms, okay? And I don't really get a whole lot of other types of videos. So even though I talk a lot about marketing and I talk a lot about content and I talk a lot about business, my For You page is specifically curated for my interests, right? Which means that you have to think about the video that you're putting out to your viewer. You, you want to capture your viewer into your audience, right? And your viewer is probably going to have a very similar kind of algorithm where there's going to be one category that they're going to get a lot of content on. And you don't want to necessarily pigeonhole your page or your channel on that one type of content. You want to have a variety because then what happens is you can connect with people in different subject and topic areas, right? So again, going back to myself as an example, I get a lot of spirituality, manifestation, personal growth kind of stuff. But because I am interested in that, of course, that's going to keep showing up on my page. 
if I were to create content, because I have my own page, about spirituality, manifestation, and personal growth, then what's going to happen is my videos are going to show up on people who have that as an interest on their For You page. And then what happens is they can look at my TikTok profile and they can be like, oh yeah, I totally resonate with what you are saying and I totally resonate with everything that you're talking about. I'm binging your content, right? So that way you are, again, making connections with people in more than one subject in more than one category. So to me, it's a little interesting that there are two mermaids on this um on this live because to me that says that you guys are probably if I had to take a guess content creators and a lot of my videos probably if I had to take a guess have been showing up on pages of people who want to become content creators because typically most of the time I am using those kinds of hashtags. I'm talking about how to create content. I'm talking about how to promote your content on social media, right? That's just a guess. I don't know if that's entirely true. But if it is, let me know down in the comments. Like, yeah, I found you because of a video where you were talking about creating content. Then I will know like, okay, that makes sense because you guys want to create content around being a mermaid, right? Like that is what you want to promote. Like that is what you want to put out into the world. Yes, okay, see, that is why I'm, yes, okay. So what you want to consider when you're putting out a video, let's just use you guys as an example now, right? Because it would be great to have an example or to get an understanding of how you could reach more people, right? For you guys, you want to reach people who probably want to learn how to dive if I had to make a guess, right? You want to connect with people who want to learn how to dive or who want to create um, some kind of mermaid vibe in their life, right? You are on my For You page about making content and trending things. Yes. Okay. See, exactly. Creating content. There you go. So if you want to get, let's just say, okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. I do this sometimes when I start to get excited. So real Brooklyn Lee. Real Brooklyn Lee, let me know what you do because if I had to take a guess, you're in real estate. So let me know down in the comments if that's what it is. You're looking to create real estate content. But if I am not correct, then let me know down in the comments. Um, I appreciate you and the info. I have to go to the gym, because, but I'm starting to go live because of you. Modern Minima, I am so glad to hear that. I can't wait to see you tomorrow. Enjoy the gym, especially for me. I can't go for another two and a half weeks. So rep it out, like do the thing. And then let me know how it goes because I am living through everyone who is able to go work out right now. I cannot work out until um, at least August 23rd because of because of this one right here. So, Okay. Going back to digital marketing, Facebook ads, slash websites. Okay, so I'll get to that in a second. Going back to the mermaid thing. If I had to take a guess, you guys want to get paid for the content that you're creating about being a mermaid. Probably. If that is true, let me know down below in the comments. Yes. Oh my gosh, yes. Thank you so much, Modern Minima. I appreciate that. Um, Have a good one. Um, Excuse me. No crying on this live. Eat your binky. So... If that is true, my mermaid peeps, again, let me know. I see that you're sending me likes, so I'm assuming that it's true. You want to get paid for creating content as a mermaid. If I were you, what any pay? If I were you, I would stay in the realm that you're currently in, and I would reach out to brands and potentially incorporate your favorite brands into a video. I don't know what a brand for diving would be, but let's just say you had a mermaid suit and it was by like Calvin Klein, just because that's like the the one designer that's coming to my name right now, my head right now. If Calvin Klein created a mermaid suit, I would make a video. I would talk about how I love Calvin Klein's mermaid suit and I would promote it to my audience, right? Then what you're doing is you're you're literally you're promote it's like a referral. Like you're promoting somebody's material to other people to talk about how great it is to have this particular mermaid suit, right? Then what I would do after you do it, you know, a couple of times, take those that collection of videos, 
send it to Calvin Klein. And then you say like, hey, Calvin, I would really love to talk about what a brand partnership would look like. I've created all of this user-generated content, UGC, that talks about how much I love your products. Can we create a partnership together? Or can you look over my videos, right? Like, look at all of the things that I have been doing for you. What would a partnership look like for us, right? Like, you you want to make it about Calvin, because then what you're doing is you're showing him like I am talking to your uh, I'm talking to other people about your product because I love it so much. Can we find a way to make this work together essentially, right? Scales by Calvin Klein. I love my Calvin scales. Oh my gosh, that is so funny. <laughs> I just like totally like picked that out. I picked that out of the nothing in the air. <laughs> so I'm glad to hear that that worked and that that's actually a thing because that totally was like, I'm like, I don't know, Calvin Klein, right? So that's what I would do. You're creating user generated content. Essentially, you're talking about their products. You're talking about how amazing they are. You're talking about how you can use them. You're talking about the color scheme. You're talking about putting it on, you're talking about a day in the life, right? Like you're doing these things. Obviously a lot of influencers do this, but it is a great way to get a connection and to get a partnership together in order to make some kind of money. I'm going to tell you right now, it's different for every company. For some companies, they're going to look at how many people are in your audience and what your like influence over them is as in like what your engagement rate is so let's just take for example i have 14.5 thousand followers in my community and i typically engage with probably a 10 percent of my audience which is a lot right like that is something that brands might say yeah we want to pay you a little bit more because you're talking to more people it's really it's like a matter of really like word of mouth referral kind of marketing right like that's gonna be your golden style of marketing and that's why a lot of companies brands are going into user generated content they're going into influencers they're going into brand partnerships because then other people are talking about their stuff so that they can make sales. Because again, you want to be top of mind for a lot of things. If I were to ask you, for example, as top of mind example, okay? If I were, if I were to ask you what the number one soda or Coke is in the world, what would you say? Drop it down in the comments drop down in the comments like what the number one soda slash coke is in the world okay because it is like a snap for a lot of people and then this way i can go and look at some of the questions who would you send that email to a lot of the time companies will have their pr emails or they'll have um like outreach emails and you can go onto their website and find it out if not, then you can probably just fill out the content, uh, I mean, contact information. Um, I know for a lot of other companies, they will have a team, their marketing team actually reach out to people to do influencer campaigns for them as well. But if you wanted to take your UGC content and then get it to Calvin Klein, like I was talking about before, there probably is, if you go on to calvinkline.com, there probably is a section down at the bottom, like way, way bottom in the footer of the website that you can start to look for that kind of information. Finding the right person who is a decision maker is my challenge. Um, Judy Seeger, let me know what you mean by that because I'm not entirely sure what you mean by finding the right person who is a decision maker is my challenge. I, I don't quite understand. That's a little vague for me. It's Coke, right? Yes, it is Coke. That is the number one soda slash Coke in the world, okay? And there's a reason for that. That's because they they position themselves that way. They wanted to be known as the number one Coke product in the world, even though... Pepsi was preferred by nine out of 10 taste testers, right? So they did the whole taste testing study and Pepsi was found to have more people enjoy the taste of Pepsi than the taste of Coca-Cola. That again is something they can use in their marketing because now they're like, oh, well we have, you can do like the hero versus the villain, right? Like you can villainize Pepsi for making 
their product look better because it tastes better, right? Like, but then Pepsi can use that too because they're number two and they could be like, well, this is why we're the second most enjoyable Coca-Cola product in the world. So like, it's really just a matter of top of mind and then how you can then use everything out of that. So if you wanted to be top of mind for, I keep getting like a million emails and they're distracting the living hell out of me. Um, if you wanted to be known for diving, then talk about diving companies, talk about diving techniques, talk about dive, like that. It, it is top of mind awareness again, which is why I am known for being content and marketing as my top of mind awareness, because that's what I talk about most. But then people then when they come to my page, they're going to know like, oh, she's into this and she's a new mom and she has a daughter and she likes to work out and all of these other things, right? So you want to think of your social media as a portfolio. If you are an artist, you know what I mean. If you're a graphic designer, you know what I mean. Your social media is a portfolio. It is more than just one thing about what you do it is who you are because then you take your portfolio to a company or you take your portfolio to a job interview and they're like okay i can see that you have a range of interests you have a range of what you can do as far as work we're gonna hire you right like think of your social media as a portfolio it's more than just it's a collection it is literally like it's i'm gonna be like with you you're more nine times out of 10, you're not going to see people get paid for their social media. Social media is a vehicle to get paid. So that is why I'm saying use your social media as a portfolio because then you use it as a vehicle for your business. You use it as a vehicle to get people into your offers, to launch to your audience, to, you know, tell people about what it is that you have that can help them out. Um, I work with smaller companies in the health industry who typically don't have a big PR team. Okay. So finding the right person who is a decision maker is my challenge in these small companies who don't typically have a big PR team. Okay. I want to like tell you about this story, (laughs) but I almost don't want to tell you this story because I don't know where you're tuning in from. But I'm going to be as vague as humanly possible. All right. So there was a pharmaceutical company whom I was working with earlier in the year. And they had no PR team and they had no marketing team. And that was one of the reasons why I was hired to be a part of their. They wanted to start a marketing team, right? So I, I was hired to be a part of this marketing team. And our job as a small company who had a very small marketing team was the marketing team was supposed to look for the people, okay? So I'm not sure which side of the equation you are working on here. If you're the company that you want to get somebody to promote your company or if you want to be gotten by the company, okay? If you want to be gotten by, or if you have been gotten by the company, then your job is to promote that company, right? I wanna be used by the company, okay? So you want to be gotten by the company. If they are a newer company, what I would do is I would try and find their corporate headquarters and I would, okay, I'm going to use, this is a very like specific example. Alani, I don't think it's Alani actually. Alani is not the right one. There is a drink company that is based in Lincoln Park and I have to remember which one it is because I don't think it's Alani New. Alani New is like that really big women's one. It's a different one. And it's a smaller company. I have my computer here today, which is why I'm like, okay, let's just do this. Kalo, that is the one. Kalo. Kalo is a smaller company. It's up and coming. So Kalo is a brand that, again, smaller company, up and coming, probably doesn't have as big of a a PR or a marketing team, but it probably has a PR or marketing team because I am on their website right now and they they look pretty fine. 
if I wanted to, if I were a content creator and I was creating content for Kalo, right? And I can't find people to reach out to because it's a small company, then what I would do is I'm on their website, right? I'm, I would go onto their website, the company's website, and I am gonna click on the find us section. And okay, so it looks like it pulls up a bunch of like where you can find Kalo. I would go down to the footer of the website and there's a contact us tab. I would literally just toss in like a contact us email into the contact us page and I would drop your name, drop your email, drop your message and then send it because then it's going to go to a general inbox and then it's going to go to wherever it needs to go to because clearly they don't have anything listed as far as who to reach. But if you were to go on to, let's just say, tiktok.com, right? And my computer is going to make noise because I have my volume on, so let's just turn that off. And let's just say I were to go on to tiktok, right? And I search Kalo on tiktok. I do not see Kalo maybe beverages. Kalo... Kilo, Kilo drinks, Kilo, well, if I go, hold on, maybe they don't have a TikTok, maybe they just have an Instagram, I'm not quite sure what their social media channels look like, they don't have a TikTok, so let's just say I were to go on to Instagram, right, Instagram, let's just say you were to go on to their Instagram, right, you go on to Instagram, you go search for Kilo, I would go on to Kalo's page on Instagram and then take your videos and have them handy. You might not send them the first time, but you might send Kalo a message saying something like, your product has changed my workout and I've been talking to everybody at my gym about your beverage. My my intention is to show you the videos that I've been creating and sharing with my community. Is it okay if I send a few over? And I would just literally DM them. They probably are going to get a lot of DMs in a day. Make it stand out, obviously. But again, make it about the beverage company. Because then what they're going to see is that you really care about their stuff. And you really believe in their stuff. And that is... That is how you want, to, that is how you're going to get to working with them or, you know, starting a partnership or being used by them. Okay. Let me know if that answers your question, Judy. <clears throat> One recommendation that I have since we're still kind of on this topic is to read the book. Yes. Okay. Great. Thanks. Okay. Awesome. One other recommendation that I have if, <clears throat> sorry, I have something in my throat right now. Um, if it is your intention to reach out, <clears throat> what the fuck? <laughs> if your intention is to reach out to companies and strike a brand partnership or to reach out to other people and to get them to work with you, I would read the book, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. That is a great read. There are tons of tips and there's a lot of literature in there um, on supporting how to be influential and how to create partnerships, relationships, um, how to generate even more money because of your relationships and how you are considering the other person before considering yourself, right? So that would be a great read. It'll give you a little bit more of a variety of topics than I'm giving you right now on this live. And of course, I'm over my 30 minutes, but you know me, I love to over deliver and I love to make sure that your questions are answered. So I'm gonna go another two or three minutes here. So if you have any other questions, be sure to drop them down in the comments. Um, you're turning my idea wheels. I am glad to hear that. Idea wheels are the best kinds of wheels. I'm doing a 365 podcast because of a guy who stitched your video about podcasting every day. I love hearing that, that is awesome. Conscious Wes, let's connect because I would love to know more about how to get a podcast started. <laughs> In all honesty, if I could take the audio from these, you know, TikTok live replays and like put it onto a podcast, then it would make my life so much easier. Um, definitely. Okay, awesome. I'm so glad. Shoot me um, a message and we can connect here on TikTok, on Instagram, wherever. Maybe I'll shoot you a message. I have so much going on. I wish I could, I mean, like literally my, my 
table right now is a mess because I have insurance paperwork. I have insurance paperwork over here. I have my computer here. I have my notebook here. I have the baby here. And I have all of the mail and shit that I have to go through and receipts over there. So like, it's been really hard for me to like, remember to reach out to people. So if you guys can like reach out to me, that would be great. <laughs> They say that people you come across are sent to you at the certain times for certain reasons. Yes. I am so glad we found each other. Yes, yes, yes. We can talk about it on my podcast, honestly. That, is, that would be awesome. That would be so amazing. Yes, I would love that. Um, I also want to check out your page because your handle is Conscious West. So I kind of am curious if you were like into consciousness and like all of that neuroscience and spirituality and subconscious kind of stuff because that is like my thing lately i am like just absorbing it like a, a freaking sponge um sorry penelope needs her binky um i really try and stray away from using that word because that is like a filler and i hate fillers i have like an irk with fillers it just really bothers me. That and like, that's another big filler word that I'm really trying to stay away from. Glad I caught your live. Spaghetti mittens. Let me know if you have been on the live for quite a while or if you are just tuning in. Um, God damn it. I, I am going over a couple of last minute questions here and I am going to go over my spiel if you missed this live or if you just tuned in okay if you missed this um we talked a lot about platform recommendations we talked a lot about uh social media platforms that you might want to start to utilize for whatever it is that you're doing for content or for your business we talked about how to reach out to brands for partnerships ugc influence influencer style stuff I really want to get to repurposing content at some point this week because somebody did also ask me a question about that and I did not talk about that today. But I am going to go over my spiel. If you missed the earlier portion of this live or if you missed earlier this week, like the first couple of days, definitely go check out my YouTube. It is linked on my TikTok page. I am taking all the replays and I am putting them up onto youtube so definitely be sure to go check out my youtube the you can absolutely subscribe i would love it if you subscribed and like looked over the stuff because then you can get an idea of like where i started and how i got to where i am now that and you can see all of this information that i've been dropping since i started this 365 day live challenge um additionally i have been getting a lot of questions about how to help out with video and how to repurpose content and all of these great topics. I love it. I'm all about it. That's literally like my job as a marketing and mindset mentor. So we talk a lot about this in the marketing segment of what I do. I am going to be hosting a masterclass. It is completely free on August 17th at 1 p.m. Eastern. I am inviting you. I would love to have you. I would love to see you. I would love to connect with you there. So then it's not just me talking to you over a phone. Like we can actually talk face to face. And then you could see like, oh yeah, this is Balance. She does the same thing on her lives and she's the same way. And she's kind of weird, but I really like her. So <clears throat> you could check that out at the link in my bio. It is literally under Presence Masterclass. You could like just grab the link and because I don't have the uh, capability to generate an invite, just put it into your calendar. So then that way you don't forget. Last thing, I am going to be going live tomorrow sometime between the hours of 2.30 and 3.30 p.m. It definitely is the best time just because of this little tiny person that I have over here. She's really darn cute and I love her so much, but she does have a schedule and I try to keep her on the schedule because it is, you know, it's nice to have a schedule when you have a newborn baby, at least in some way, shape or form slash capacity. All right, that all being said, I can't wait to connect with you tomorrow. Oh my gosh, yeah, I know. She is so cute. Thank you, Mally. I really appreciate that. Um, I can't wait to connect with you tomorrow. Be sure to check out and turn on notifications. That is the other thing. Yes, you can turn on notifications on TikTok to get the notify to get blah, blah, blah. I'm getting ahead of myself. You know what I mean? If you turn on your notifications, you can get notified when I'm going live. It'll literally be a pop-up on your phone, and then you just tap it and it'll take you right to my live stream. So don't forget to turn on notifications if you have missed if you have missed lives or if you want to attend lives in the future. Okay. I might be doing a video on how to turn them on. So that 
is everything for today. I cannot wait to tune in with you tomorrow between the hours of 2.30 and 3.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you for tuning in today. This one was a really long one, but I, I like it. It was good. We talked about a lot of stuff. Definitely be sure to check it out on YouTube. But until tomorrow, thanks for tuning in. Okay, bye.